Peace. This nigga keep it real coming to you. Once again, today's video, we're going to talk about the meaning of life. Before we do that, once again, we're going to kill the whole Adam and Eve concept. Now listen to this. <clears throat> I'm trying to get you niggas to think. Keep this quote in mind. As when we come out of our mother's wounds, we are all atheists. We don't know anything. We don't know anything about a God. We don't know anything about Jesus. Nobody. Nothing. So how do all these ideologies and concepts and stuff get pushed into our brains? See, if you don't question life, how are you going to know what life is about? No one can tell you what the truth is. Because you are your own truth. Now listen to this. Oh! 
since the first son. There is no first, second, or third. So, so the Christians, they lie. They say, to live forever, you got to die. See? But this symbol says, you don't die. Life is eternal. The opposite of death is birth. But life is eternal. And if we understood that, we would not be afraid to step up. Okay? I'm teaching history of African people, and people are making the mistake to think that I need to be removed. Now, the reason I need to be, hold on, the reason the sister feels like I need to be removed, because she has the definition of what God is downloaded into her mind of 30, 40, 50, 60 years. But I'm telling you that the idea and the concept originally was based off of wise old elders, right? The king or the queen could be God, right? The abroad and everything in it, water, because water can be a solid, liquid, or gas. And everything is due to sin. It's mirroring, it's mirroring what I'm what I've been saying. And you niggas still don't get it. You still don't get it. Excuse me. 
So you got the fallopian tube, the ovaries, uh, the the uh, the visceral pelvic. Right, this right here, vice. This is your fish. This is your fish symbol. The, the fish symbol. They get this to Jesus, but this is for the woman. Pisces. Vesero symbol, number 31 on this chart. So we got number 31, and it's going down to, what is that, 31. You, you women help me out with this. Comment, this video is for you all. All right? So you got the you got the woman's you got the Pisces right the uh, what is that the V all right the vestinal virgins okay so you have this temple right here let's go back okay. So you have here the, it? it's all going back to the woman. Just looked at the damn thing. So how the hell did Adam and Eve, when, when God made Adam and Eve, you mean to tell me these niggas just came out full adults? They didn't, they didn't have to go through no type of childbirth. They, they just came out walking as grown adults, speaking, speaking uh, 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 adult languages. They didn't have to eat no type of baby food or nothing? Get the fuck out of here. Bullshit. They're lying to you. Now let's go back to this chart for the woman. And you niggas, you men who are married or you are into a relationship with a woman, you need to learn your woman. So you have here the... What symbol is that? It was number 31, right? Right here, the vestibular pelvic, right? And you have here, let's highlight this. Okay, so this is an organ. This is the part of the woman's body, right? Okay. So, you have here, right here, this is it, the basica, this is the, this is the woman, and they give it to Jesus, get the hell out of here, man, okay, so let's go here to the onk symbol, right, so here's your onk symbol, Came out talking. They just talking. They just full of adults, huh? They ain't got to That the uh, the woman had to go to no type of childbirth or nothing. He just came out walking on both feet. He didn't eat no. He didn't have to uh, go through eating baby food or nothing, huh? So here's your unk symbol, right? Here's the unk, right? This is like the female's uh, sign to me. This is like the woman's uh, symbol to me. Let's look at it. Female reproductive system. Right? You have the cervix, the vagina, the clitoris. All this shit that I'm looking on, looking up on the Wikipedia is in this woman's book. And here it is right here. So you have this symbol right here. And this is like the unk. Right? Let's read the unk. Egyptian cross of life representing union of male and female. Sexual symbolic. A female oval surmounting a male cross. Its other name was Kila now because the sacred marriage between God and goddess was supposed to take place at the source of the Nile each year before the flood. In one second. Goddamn Adam and Eve. Bullshit, man. Get the hell out of that garbage. That's trash. 
Now, who they think they fooling, man? They ain't fooling this nigga right here. Your whole Bible's about sexual reproduction. All right, so let's keep on reading. The Christian version of the cross of life, which didn't appear in Christian art until the 5th century A.D., significantly lacked the feminine oval and kept only the masculine part of the figure. Here are your footnotes at the bottom, the references. The Ankh seemed to have evolved from an ancient symbol of goddess, of the goddess in, in Libya, in Libya and Phoenicia, a narrow triangle surmounted by a cross by a crossbar and a round or oval head. Egyptians regarded the unk as a universal life charm. The life of every being, divine or human, depended on his or, or her possession of it. From first to last, the gods are seen carrying it in their right hands, and they gave life to their kings and servants presenting it to them. Earlier Christians also used the unk occasionally as an emblem, as an emblem of immortality. Calling it an assated cross. They knew the Egyptians had a certain letter, hieroglyph, that stood for life to come. And this letter had the form of a cross. And hieroglyphics, the Ankh stood simply for the word life. So we know that the Egyptians are, are African people, are black people. Now let's read about Adam. Goddamn Adam and Eve. Bullshit. Get the fuck out of here with that garbage. They just come out full of adults. They ain't crawling on all fours or nothing. They just come out walking upright, huh? Get the hell out of here with that garbage. So let's say I say that Adam. Literally, a man made of blood and pre biblical myths. A creature formed by the goddess of earth from her own clay, Adama, giving life her blood. The idea of Adam's rib was taken from a Sumerian goddess who formed infants' bones from their mother's ribs. She was both lady of the rib and lady of life. Her name carried both meanings at once. See birth, birth giving. So let's go to birth giving. You have a, a section on here talking about birth control. Okay. I told him this before that the birth on birth giving the man wants to be like the woman. So if the man doesn't have the if the man if the man doesn't have the sexual reproduction organs to bring a baby about, where is the baby gonna come out? Where is the baby gonna come from? If, if a man was to get pregnant, where is the baby gonna come from? Out his ass? Because that's where your, uh, that's where what's things, uh, that's where uh, your waist comes in, out of your, out of your rectum. So you got a baby coming out of somebody's ass, huh? Get the hell out of here. You know how sick that baby would be? All that, all, all that toxin that the baby is, is, is inhaling and ingesting? Because the woman has the fallopian tube, right? After ovulation, the egg is, the egg still is captured by the fallopian tube. After traveling down the fallopian tube to, to the uterus, occasionally being fertilized on its way by an, by, uh, an incoming sperm. So the baby has a tube that it's feeding through. Okay? So you got conception, concept, fertilization. Here's your sperm, your sperm and the ovum fusing. The man fed the seed and the woman take care of the rest. The woman, the man, you really don't, the man really don't have, no, the man really don't have nothing to do with it, really. They just plant the seed and that's it. After that, it's, the, it's on the woman. She's able to give birth.
to both male and female. This is facts. This is science. This is life. So, let's just say somebody who died, I mean somebody who's in a, like I said, I talked in my last video, somebody who's in a war, and they go to war and they get their arms blown off. And in the spirit world, what's going to happen to their arms? Their arms going to come back? It's going to be rejuvenated? Hell no, nah, it's bullshit. Bullshit. Now let's go into, let's go into Eve. Hebrew root 
H-W-H, meaning both life and woman, and Latin letters, E-B-E, with the additional of the I, Yod, it amounted to the goddess, invocations of her own name, as the word of creation, as common idea in Egypt and other ancient lands. <clears throat> not the scriptures said Adam was created by the power of E's word, not God's. She said Adam lived. Rise up, rise upon the, rise up upon the earth. <clears throat> as she, as soon as she spoke the word, her word became reality. Adam rose up and opened his eyes. When he saw her, he said, "You will be called the mother of living, the mother of the living, because you are the one who gave me life." Adam's name meant he was formed of clay, moistened with blood, the female. Magic of Adama or bloody clay. You see that? <clears throat> the biblical idea was a reversal of older myths in which the goddess brought forth a primal male ancestor, then made him her mate. The arch archetypal divine incest relationship between the relationship traceable in every mythology. <clears throat> you see that? So let's look up the word logos. <clears throat> it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with the God. Let's, let's see what that is. that passed from Tatrism through uh, Neoplatonic philosophy to Christianity. The theory was that a deity could create anything, other deities, worlds, creatures, by the power of magic words. When the name was spoken, the thing materialized. The Logos then was divine essence concentrated in a word and made manifest, as Jesus was called the Word made flesh. The Gospel of John gave him eternal existence. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1.1 1, 1. Judeo-Christian thinkers defined the, the Logos in so many ways that it became virtually without meaning, and so was relegated to the status of a deep mystery. The Logos was Christ, or the wisdom of Yahweh, or an archangel, archangel or truth, or the high priest, or the law or the covenant, or the scriptures, or Moses, or the creative power, or the soul of, or the soul of the world, or the sun, etc. Or, Orphic, Pythagorean, and Neoplatonic philosophers who expounded the, the Logos doctrines were not well understood by their Christian followers, who struggled vainly with the subtile semantics of the pagan philosophers. The pagans' word made flesh was usually Hermes, Representing the Logos, sperm, sperm, maticos, spermaticos, seminal word, proceeding from the mouth of Zeus to beget all things through the power of his of his agent on earth. It's dealing with sexual reproduction. See that? One of the reasons for male enthusiasm for the work for the Logos doctrine was that it provided male gods with a method of creating, formerly the exclusive prerogative of the birth-giving goddess. Hermes the Logos became Hermes the Creator, exercises the magic feminine powers be derived from living in androgynous union with Mother Aphrodite. <clears throat> the perfect word addressed Hermes as not only the light of the life of man, but also the fruitful womb of all. <clears throat> so this is dealing with the woman. It's dealing with the woman. Don't get pissed off at me. If I'm exposing, I'm tearing down. I'm tearing down your beliefs. I'm, I'm tearing down your belief system. Okay, that's facts.
Your Bible's talking about sexual reproduction, man. Ain't no goddamn afterlife. That's bullshit. When you are born from your mother's womb, you don't know anything. You want to watch a YouTube clip about child about uh, childbirth giving? Let's watch it. Let's see the, the let's see the baby coming out talking. I shouldn't have to do this, but I gotta do it. Well, I'm gonna give child to birth in hospital. Let's see it. Excuse the, uh, 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 the what's the name? The nudity. But this is what happens. Okay? This is facts. Woman gave birth to her baby in a car. Watch on your own. So Adam, Adam did not come out. Adam and Eve did not come out as full adults walking around, talking up, talking up, talking a language. So I guess they didn't come from child. They didn't come from child, uh, childbirth, walking on all fours, crawling. Mumbling words, they weren't even mumbling words, they didn't have a sound. They didn't even know what the word was. You niggas actually believe that Adam and Eve story? You some goddamn fools. It's allegory, man. It's, God, it's a bunch of goddamn stories. Wake the hell up. You live, you are born, and you die. People say, what is our purpose? What, what's the point of us being here? I don't know what your purpose is. You figure it out. It's your life. I don't got no goddamn answers. I'm still trying to figure out my own damn life. That's the purpose of life. You question the shit. You question life. That's your purpose. You question what, you question what somebody tell you. I'm gonna shoot you the goddamn president. I'm gonna question your ass. President, president, that's just a title. Your ass is a man just like me. You piss the same color yellow, you shit the same color brown, and you bleed the same color red. All the only thing different is you got a title attached to your ass. Other than that, your ass is just like me. You just got a different skin, a different skin pigmentation. You can die just like anybody else. Okay? So I don't have the I don't have the answers for you. What what's your purpose in life? I don't know what your purpose in life is. I know one thing is not containing the goddamn book. The book is just a tool. It's just a so-called guide you. But the book is not there with you filling out a job application, is it? The book is not there uh, when you are standing before that judge and your ass about to be sent to life. That book ain't there to help you, is it? The book is not there to help when it's time for you to cook a meal and you are unable to read and you have to go off of your senses. It's not there to help you, is it? What about the people that's born blind? What about the people that's born with, with uh, ab abnormalities? Abnormal is the opposite of normal. So people are born abnormal. They are born with, de with deficiencies. They are not born with all their limbs. So how is that possible that we all obey the so-called God's image and he's supposed to be all perfect, but how the fuck are people born with abnormal abnormalities? 
People born with, with uh, 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 extra feet, a extra toes and hands, extra toes and, and fingers. People born blind. People born, people born deaf. So you mean to tell me these people going to hell because they can't read the Bible? These fuckers can't see. These people can't see. What about people that's deaf? They can't hear what you're saying. <coughs> you gotta do sign language. So you niggas don't think about that. You don't think about everybody else. You think about your goddamn self. You don't do what the goddamn Bible says do. It says put yourself before others. You don't do what the Bible says do. You don't even know what the goddamn book is talking about. I'm talking about some goddamn demons and devils. That's bullshit. That's a that's a mind, manip mind manipulation and, and uh, scare tactics to keep your ass in fear from not questioning this book. There's some man rule. I can I can write a Bible and say and I can say thus he said of thus thou and all that shit. I can say I wrote a book, a Bible, and God came to me and said this, and you niggas will believe it. You believe any goddamn thing. You reaching for shit that ain't there. You you reaching for ghosts and demons to, to appear, but the shit ain't gonna happen. If you ever seen a ghost or a demon or a devil or whatever, right? Well, go to James Randy's website. Go to James Randy. Go to go to get in touch with James Randy and ask him can he can can uh, can he uh, can he represent you or whatever, and ask him. To get the money. You got the James Randy Foundation. Educational Foundation. This is the dude who exposed Uri Geller. Uri Geller was, was a so-called so -called mind bender. Who can bend metal spoons. And this man went on uh, Johnny Carson's show. And changed the props around. And put on some different props. And this dude couldn't do the shit. He couldn't perform the magic. The niggas, the, 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 the dude came with all kind of excuses. I'm not feeling well. He came with all kind of shit. Let's look at it. James, Randy, and he exposed uh, what's the, one of them pasta. Uh, he, he exposed uh, Peter Popoff. He exposed that bullshit. James, Randy, exposed spoon bending. Look it up. James Randy demonstrates how psychic Uri Geller Ben Spoons and other magic tricks. Magical thinking, you know, is a slippery slope. Sometimes it's harmless enough, but other times it's quite dangerous. Uh, personally, I'm opposed to that. Could be something. This is, this is James uh, Uri Geller. Think he beacon Ben Spoons and all that type of shit. But this man came on here. Here it is, right here. Here's Uri Geller. Johnny had been a magician himself and was skeptical. I was asked to help prevent any trickery. Nice to see you. Thanks. We uh, we this have only met. This scares me. This, this scares you? Well, this is just, we just got some things together here. And I told them to provide their own props and not to let Geller or his people anywhere near them. Also, one of our staff members, uh, did some drawings which have been sealed in an envelope uh, and I'd like you to take your own pace when you feel like you want to try anything. Right. Do you want to try that particular uh, experiment first? Well, I'll feel free. When you okay. Sure. Like, like when you call the psychic hotline and you ask for a reading, why does the psychic ask your name? If the person is a psychic, they should already know what your goddamn name is. Why are they asking you questions? Why are they asking you what your name is? And how old are you? That should already know the shit. It's bullshit. They taking your money. We'll start eliminating the ones that do not have the water. All right, without touching them. He is really suspicious. <laughs> I'm having a hard time with you. Okay, I don't mean to be, all right? I really no, don't. Just, just keep looking. Okay, let me rest a little, all right? All right. He can't, he can't perform the tricks. Because before this 
program, your producer came and he read me at least 40 questions you're going to ask me. Well, I can ask you all kinds of questions if you'd like, if you'd like me to ask I you have, questions. I have to have time. And, uh, um, Right, we are back. Your brewery was telling me you, you, you don't feel, what, strong tonight? I don't Is feel that... strong. It's not all tonight. Right now I'm, feel, I'm feeling being pressed and then I can't... Well, I'm not trying to press you. I really not. But, you no, know, you're only I'm... telling me, well, will you try that? Well, that. <laughs> well I thought that was the idea of... Uh, of uh, no, I'm not, I'm not trying to push you down. They ain't feeling strong. Bullshit. Your ass got exposed, nigga. Get your ass out of here. You got exposed. All that demons and de devils and angels, that's all bullshit. It's garbage. It's trash. It's a, it's a scare tactic to keep your ass in check. To keep you from questioning the life. I'm going to question that shit. You can, stay like, you can stay a dumbass all you want. This nigga right here, I'm going to question your ass. I'm going to shit who you are. You ain't gonna tell me any old kind of old bullshit. And you don't think I'm gonna go, go back and hand your ass and fact check your ass? Get the fuck out of here. I don't know who you think you, who think you fooling, man? Who think you fooling? Ain't no goddamn sense. You niggas believing in any goddamn thing. Come on, we, we, oh, we chose to come here. We chose to come here and all that shit. How can you choose to come here when your ass not born yet? You don't got no spirit. You wanna know what the word spirit means? Look at the word spirit. Spirit just means breath or air or wind. So you say you're doing something spiritual, it just means you're breathing. Just like you. 
trying to steal your wife, or you know how y'all do in church, or the boy trying to steal your boyfriend, I don't know, right? None of you speak Greek or Hebrew, you speak English. So to understand what we're saying, let's go to the source of the language, which is the dictionary. Okay? Here we are. In now, when they wrote this word spirit, this is coming from a male perspective ideology. But what about the woman's perspective? In New Oxford American Dictionary. First, let's look at the word religion. We don't want to look at the definition because definitions will confuse you. Because words don't always mean uh, uh, the same thing in every context, in every instance. So to get a real, what we want is the essence of the word to know what it means. The essence of the origin of the word. Right. The essence of the word is always going to speak to the heart of the matter. It's always going to give us what we're looking for as far as what the word truly connotes. What it was meant to say. Okay? And once you know what the word was trying to say, what it was meaning to say, then you know whether or not if you are saying what you want to say correctly. You see, there's nothing worse than saying... So you can look this up on your own. Spirit in the Hebrew, Hebrew is Ruach, air. Numa is wind. Numa. But that's, that's coming from a male perspective. So soul, spirit, they say it's a, it's a ghost. It's something inside, a ghost. But that's not true. So it says soul, Germanic seal. Soul was feminine. Used by mystics like Eckhart and Goat in the same sense as Shakti in India. The feminine reality. Most ancient words for the word were female. I mean, most ancient words for the soul were female. Psyche, Numa, Anima, Alma. God's souls were goddesses. Um, the ancients believed every man had a female soul derived from the mother goddess through his earthly mother. Each Egyptian had seven souls bestowed by the seven Hathars who, who guarded the planetary spirits and were fairy godmothers at the birth of every child. Now it says here that Greeks connected different aspects of the soul with different deities. Psyche, the spirit, was married to Eros, the body, until they were separated by death. This was the philosophical meaning of the romantic myth of Psyche and Eros. Uh, souls belonging to uh, Pesperon in the underworld were shadows or shades. The umbra corresponding to the Egyptian uh, Kaiba. Reflection, souls, and water seem to have been connected with the water goddess Echo as shown by the myth of Narcissus. Patriarchal writers or men writers tended to emphasize the soul called breath, Numa, since this was the kind of soul that could be given by a father. The idea came from, from Vedic India. Patriarchal Brahma called the vital principle Self or soul or the Atman. Breath, cognate of the Greek Atmos, air. Brahmin fathers gave their children, gave their uh, Brahmin fathers gave their children breath souls as opposed to the souls of blood, heart, name, flesh, mind, shade, etc. Um, it says here that the biblical God performed the same miracle. With breath, restoring life to slain warriors, warriors who had become heaps of dry bones. Now let's let's go here. It says here that uh, Christians largely largely accepted the air soul theory, drawing out of it their idea of a visible ghost that could be felt but not seen, like air. And the notion that the soul can depart from the body through the nose or through the mouth, like breath. Yet older ideas of the souls also hung on. The Egyptian doctrine of the seven souls, descending from the seven, seven planetary spheres, passed into Gnostic Christianity as seven qualities of souls drawn from 
and influenced by the planetary spirits. Coming down from heaven to enter a newborn baby, the soul had its original purity adulterated by sins and passions as it passed through those spirits. As the soul descend, they draw with them the uh, torpor of Saturn, the wrathfulness of Mars, and etc., etc., right? And it says that uh, Christians generally restricted the number of souls to one. But some Gnostics held that every man has two souls, one emanating from the first mind, the one called the God-seeing soul, put in from the revolution of the heavens. Theories on the physical seat of the soul and the body has been, has been many and various. The ancients usually placed the soul in the heart or the liver. Patriarchal or man thinkers declared that a man's testicles held the souls of his future children. St. Thomas Aquinas and other Christian authorities concurred in this. Some souls were external. They dwelt in umbilical cords, placenta, nail clippings, or shorn hair. An injury to these articles would injure the person. A more recent theory dating from the earlier age of enlightenment was that the seat of the soul is the pineal gland. You hear all this, all this stuff? It's guesses and speculation. They don't know. They're just guessing. What you don't mean. And one of the worst things is to, you know, I always tell people, say what you mean and mean what you say about spirit. Remember I said religion and spirituality are not the same thing. Now, when you look up the word spirituality, it's always going to redirect you to spirit because spirit is the root word. So now let's look at the word spirit and let's look at the origin. Okay? The origin is Middle English, just like religion. But this one is from, as opposed to being from the French, this one is from the Anglo, yeah, actually it is, but it's from the Anglo Norman French. So it's a different version of French. It's from the Anglo Norman French, right? And which and the Anglo-Norman French um, um, spirit comes from the Latin spiritus, which means what? Breath. Spirit from spirit. Now spirit. Now when you hear the word spirit, you've been taught to think one thing except for what the word actually means. The word means breath. Spirit, meaning it's a spirit from what? Spirare, breathe. Do you see that? Breathe. That means. Anytime you are talking about religion, the only thing that you could be talking about is commitment. Nothing else. You can be talking about nothing else. Anytime you are talking about spirit, you can only be talking about what? What is this, Tanetta? Breathe. Breathing. That is all you are talking about. Nothing. Put it back in, please, so they can see it. Because if you don't believe me, perhaps you believe the dictionary. And if you're too stupid to believe in the dictionary, I've been told to believe the dictionary. I can't help you. All right? I mean, not the, not the, not the dictionary. But you see what the, what the dictionary is saying? It's saying the dictionary says that breath, spirit means breath, when and air. That's it. Nothing divine, nothing magical, nothing uh, <coughs> spooky about it. <coughs> Everyone gets it right either. That's so Kurt Franklin said he wants to. Why they there? Because they're synonyms. They're one and the same. <coughs> okay? Part of speech, noun, neuter, transliteration, numa, short definition, wind, breath. Am I making this up, Sanetta? Go to 4151 in strong concordance and look in the Greek. This is what spirit means wind or breath or breathing. So if you're dealing with spirituality and it's not pertaining to wind, breath, air, or breathing, you're not doing anything spirit. The air. Breathing, this thing out here that we call air or emptiness, right? Another word for this, emptiness. the law in the Old Testament, he said everything in it. So let's, yeah, let's keep it moving. If you go back to the Hebrew strong and you look at the word ruach again for spirit, again, number 7303, it's used 378 times. They say that this ruach, the air, I want you to see this, Sanetta, the air. Breathing, this thing out here that we call air or emptiness, right? Another word for this emptiness. They say that 
is use of both the so-called highest element in man and of the wind and breath as invisible, powerful, and indicative of life. Meaning that the concept of God as a spirit has to be identified with air, wind, breath, breathing, air itself, the very air itself is God. You understand? This is what this is telling you. The very ear itself is God. That's why you breathe. That's why you live. Don't try to breathe water and tell me if you're going to live. Try to breathe uh, concrete and see if you're going to... There's only one thing you can breathe, and that's air. That's what keeps you alive and conscious. Air, wind, breath, breathing. This is spirituality. You understand? Nothing else. If you're not dealing with breathing, you're not dealing with spirituality. Period. All right, let's move to the next one. Now, in ancient Egypt, we had a name for it. We knew the name of this God that you call that, that, that you call God. All right, the one you call God was God in His aspect of Shu, and there He is. Go to read. Go read about Him in the book of um, uh, uh, Egyptian symbols, still in publishing, uh, uh, page ninety nine. By um, Hike Ousu. It says, Shu, Egyptian for emptiness. Why? Because air is empty. You cannot touch it. Right? It means for emptiness and he who rises up. Why? What does air do? It rises. Okay? He was one of the primordial Egyptian gods and a personification of air. Let's go back, please. All right. What is air again? Right? Air and, air and wind, right here. Wind, ruah, wind, breath, breathing. See it right oh, that Jesus said you should not forget. Absolutely. Yeah, rising him, I'm not. And say stupid things to out. Those were his exact words. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, right there. Go back. It means being bound or committed. Uh, spirituality means breathing. Now, how do we reconcile those words together? I'm going to teach you how to reconcile these two words together. Religion, which means commitment or bound as an obligation or vow. And uh, spirit, which means breathing or breath. The only way you can reconcile these two words is you have to understand that what this is talking about is being committed to breathing the only time because the only thing that we know is that when we stop breathing we are not comfortable we are in discomfort we are in pain religion is about a supreme commitment so what this whole thing is that we all deal with the bible and all these unnecessary stories that they put in in the way that they got nothing to do with nothing this is all about what will be your capacity or state of breathing after you have expired in this life? Because what's everybody's worst nightmare? Wake up and you can't breathe. That is how essential oxygen is to our life. It is.